Good morning. Welcome to Church Online this beautiful Sunday morning. It's the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in Him in it. You know, through God, we can always navigate every season successfully. The Bible says in Psalm 18, verse 29, that by God we will leap over walls and run through troops. I believe that this season didn't catch God. I know that this season is not news to God. And God saw this before now. He's the only wise God who sees the end from the very beginning. Thankfully, we have the privilege of uh, the, uh, the privilege of technology. Or should I say that? Thankfully, we can leverage on technology in times like this to stay connected. And I'm so glad to be able to share God's word with you in the comfort of wherever you may be this beautiful Sunday morning. On the face of the earth, God has you in mind. Psalm eight and verse four: What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you visit him. I believe this morning God is visiting you. And I believe by the time we're done, in the name of Jesus, God would have spoken to you in a very specific, definite way. I believe by the grace of God that this week is already on lockdown for you. With the blessing of God trailing your path, according to Psalm 23 and verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. Not just this week, but all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, let us to enjoy the ministry of the worship team. And then from there, we're going to continue with the service. You're welcome to church. Oh, yeah. 
us to you know thank God because of this time in his presence I want to welcome you again into the presence of the Lord this beautiful Sunday morning it's time to take our confession and I hope we understand that there is no better time than times like this for us to say what God is saying for us to echo back what God is telling us the Bible says you know, once he has spoken, but two eyes are that hard, that all power belongs to God. The reason why we hear two eyes is because when God said it to once, we echo it. And so this morning, we want to echo the counsels and the promises of God concerning our lives. I would like you to say after me, say with me, I am safe and secure in God's secret place, immune against any and every plague or infection. I'm at an unreachable distance from evil. The covenant of God is my shield and refuge. My address is off radar of any disease or demonic incursion. I'm exempted from every negativity. I belong to a class of the untouchables. The blood speaks better things for me and God's glory is my covering. There's a wall of protection around me. My territory is condoned off and off limits for any form of harm or danger. Can I hear you believing? Amen. Amen. I enjoy rest. I enjoy peace. The elements of nature are working in my favor. The air I breathe is clean. The food I eat is blessed. My hand carries grace and receives only what is good from every contact with others. Say with me this morning, my atmosphere is an atmosphere of miracles. I am immune against every form of error, whether personal or by proxy. I enjoy the aid of angels and my steps are always ordered to the right places and at the right time. There shall be no loss. It's my season of greater gains and bigger wins. I am recording all an all-time high returns on all my investments. In the time of casting down, for me, there is a lifting up. I enjoy increase with ease and gain speed with peace of mind. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. I do hope that you were blessed by that ministration from the worship team this morning. You know, there are different ways that God ministers to us. One of the ways that it ministers to us is through songs. If you look at Ephesians chapter 5, the Bible said in verse 18 that we should not be drunk with wine, we are in his excess, but we should be filled with the Spirit, speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord. I believe very strongly that through that music, that song, you've been ministered to. Today, I want to share God's word with you on what I have simply titled handling storms or dealing with storms, dealing with storms. Before we go into the, into the scriptures to share this truth, 
I'd like us to have the word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity that we have once again to connect via this platform to share your word. We know that your word does not know the barrier of time or space. The Bible says that your words are spirit, your words are life. And so we know your word has the ability to, 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 to travel even faster than we can ever imagine through every available means. I'm asking, oh God, that as you look into your word this morning, you will minister to every heart, answer the questions of our heart. Thank you, because by the time this time is over, this time of sharing your word is over, we would have been fed. We would have been fed. We would have been fed. Your word would have been rightly divided. Each one, everyone will hear you in their own language. I speak peace to every troubled heart. I speak comfort, O oh God, to everyone going through a trying season. Whoever that person may be that has more questions than answers, I'm asking, O oh God, that you will be for them the Prince of Peace. You'll be for them the Comforter. Thank you because we know the grass withers, the flower fades, but your word will stand firm forever. Let your word be a blessing to us. Let, let the entrance of your word give light. Let it give understanding to the simple. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you for allowing me to share that moment of prayer with you. Now, we're going to be talking this morning from Job 38, verse 1, and then Mark chapter 5, and uh, from verse 35 to verse 40, and um, also Acts chapter 27. Acts 27 from verse 10 all the way to verse 21. You may want to focus on verses 10 to 14, and then go to verse 21. Uh, handling storms. In Job 38 and verse 1, the Bible said that the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. In the Eugene Peterson version, uh, the message version, the Bible said that finally God answered Job from the eye of a violent storm. From the middle of the storm, the answer of God came for Job. What is a storm? Uh, I checked the dictionary. And, and the dictionary says that a storm is a disturbance of the normal condition of the atmosphere, manifesting itself by winds of unusual force or direction. A disturbance of the normal condition of the atmosphere, manifesting itself by winds of unusual force or direction. I would like to define a storm as anything that is unsolicited and unwelcome but comes as an interruption. Something you didn't plan for, something that was off your radar, you didn't apply for it, you didn't say, oh, my life is so boring, I need something to come and unsettle, you know, how boring my life is, I just need something, you know, to unsettle my space. No, nobody applies for a storm. But the storm comes anyway. Look at Isaiah 59 and verse 19. Where the Bible says, when the enemy comes like a flood. Not if, when the enemy comes in like a flood. At what point did we ask for this tidal flood to come? Nobody will apply for this, but it comes anyway. It comes. You know, at different times in human, in, in, in the life of a human being, you're going to experience what I would want to call interruptions. Things that you, that probably will, will Will probably would look like where is this coming from where is this coming from what did i do to deserve this what did i do wrong you go into a state of you know self introspection you're saying did i miss god somewhere second corinthians 13 and verse 5 you want to examine yourself did i do something wrong somewhere because i don't think there's any reason why this should be happening to me years ago i read a book by Maurice Serilo, titled, Why Do the Righteous Suffer? And in that book, Maurice Serilo said, at times, bad things can happen to good people. In Psalm 34, verse 19, the Bible said, many are the afflictions, not of the wicked, not of the transgressor, the afflictions of the righteous. Hmm? But the good news, it doesn't end there. It said, the Lord delivers him out of them all. I don't know if you can remember the financial storm 
could I eat the world on a global scale in 2008 when all the stocks just crashed? How many of you can remember September 11, 2001? That was a huge one that hit America and its effect reverberated across the earth. How many of you can remember in 19, well, maybe you probably would have checked in history, that in 1918, 1919, there was something similar to what is going on right now that happened. Started in, in Europe uh, towards the end of World War I, called an influenza attack. And it ravaged the entire earth. We were told that 25% of Americans died and 20% of the entire world was affected. People died. One-fifth of the entire world population died as a result of what happened, the influenza attack of 1919. So a storm is something that nobody, it, it just interrupts your, your, your life. You're wondering, what, what's going on? What's going on? Your center is no longer holding. Things are falling apart. Things are caving. Right, left, right, and center. It's like, you, you, the gravity is not, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like you're trying to see what you can hold on to because, because the, the wind is just blowing south. Everything is going south in your life. At times people go through a marital storm. At times, you know, it's a career storm. At times it's a health crisis. A health crisis. Somebody just wakes up one day and realizes that it's like uh, uh, a part of his functional, you know, a part of his body is not functioning the way it used to function. And you're like, what's going on here? It's like, what happened to Job? You know, one day he, he wakes up and then before the end of that day, he was hearing one bad news after another. It, one would have been bad enough, but he had it over and over and over again. But you know the good news? Job outlived that season of his life. And this is my encouragement for anybody watching me this morning. That whatever is going on right now globally, you and I will outlive this. We will see the end of this. This will not see the end of us. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. Why we do not look at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are unseen, they are eternal. I want to share with you three things that cause storms. Three things. When you see anybody facing a stormy season in his life, whether it's a personal one or it's a global one like it's going on right now, three things most of the time uh, are responsible for seasons like that. I'd like you to please you know, pay attention and indulge me for these few minutes that I want to share God's word with you. The very first thing that could lead to a storm, and please listen to me, listen, hear me out. At times, people go through a storm when they refuse to heed the warnings. When they refuse to heed the warnings. The warnings will be there, but people won't pay it. Look at what happened in Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27, they were at sea. They were at sea. And Paul told them in verse 10, he said, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and sheep, but also of our lives. But the Bible said that nevertheless the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. Than by the things spoken by Paul. So it seemed like other voices had a better opinion. Don't forget that Paul was not even a sailor. Paul was a lawyer. And here was Paul speaking to men who had all the experience at sea. And he's telling them that I perceive something. This is one of the assets of the recreated human spirit. The ability to pick up on spiritual signals. To see things that the human senses may not be able to pick. That's why the Bible says that we walk by faith, not by sight. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 7. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, it said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean upon your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. One thing about God's will 
is that God's will is never democratized. It does not matter. How, now, you see, the Bible said here, in the place that we are reading, it said, because the apple was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised. Do you know majority can be wrong? The majority advised to set sail. There would have been times that you will perceive that this step that I want to take is wrong. But you see, the voice of God is usually the voice of one in the wilderness. Other people are saying, "Yo, go ahead, do it. Go ahead, take that step. Go ahead. Let me tell you this. The filter for every step you want to take should not be who is saying it, but is it in alignment with God's word? It's to let God be true. Let every man be a liar. In Psalm 119 and verse 105, it said, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So it is God's word that is our compass that lets us know which way to go, which steps to take. The word of God is always there to either caution us or to confirm that yes, go ahead and make that move. It's not everything God will be telling you, don't do something. No, it's not that kind of a God. There are times when he will tell you, go ahead, make that move, take that step. Remember in Matthew chapter 14, when Peter saw him on the Sea of Galilee, he said, if you are the one, bid me to come. And he said, come. Because according to 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 16 and 17, he said, now the Lord is that spirit. And we are the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Liberty. So he's a, he's a, he's a permission given God. He's not a God that says, no, 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 no. Don't forget he has given you his mind. So there are many times that what you will have in your spirit, in fact, the truth is, as long as you are following the, 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 the promptings of your spirit, you won't get it wrong. Because according to Acts 20 and verse 27, the spirit of man is the lamp or the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. We always miss it when we allow ourselves to succumb to people pressure. People are, we're trying to, we're trying to grandstand. We're trying to do either what is going to gratify the flesh or what is going to appeal to a block. We want to follow consensus vote. In your life, don't follow the crowd. Follow the cloud of glory. The cloud of God's glory. You should only follow the people if the people are also following God. That's what Paul said. Follow me as I follow Christ. That is no human being is your standard at the end of the day. God's word is your standard. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. So, so when people don't pay attention, I see, what, see what happened to them. You know, in, in the place that we are reading, when, when Paul told them, don't go ahead, they listen to other voices. Because usually it will not be just one voice speaking to you. First Corinthians 14, verse 10, there are many voices in the world. And each one carries a weight. The voice from your past, the voice of your peers, the voice of your fears, the voice of your proclivities. Many voices. Voice of your, you know, secret, secret, secret illusions and desires. Look at what happened here. The Bible said, look at the next, look at the next, look at the next verse. He said, um, when the south wind blew softly, Acts 27, and um, verse 13, supposing that they had obtained their desire. Hmm. This is what always happens to people. Supposing they had obtained their desire. They say that um, uh, happiness is getting what you want but fulfillment is wanting what you got at the end of the day that is it, god is telling you this is not right there is a way that seems right to a man proverbs 14 i think i think it's verse, verse 12 he says the end of that way is death right now it's looking like it's good so he said he said he said he said if, if you go back to go back to verse I think it's verse 12. Verse 12. He said, because the, the, the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail from there also. If by any means they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, opening toward the southwest and northwest. They were trying to run fast. You know, progress is not speed. Progress is direction. Trying to move very fast, but in the wrong direction. So at times, when people don't pay attention to warnings, the one is up there. Don't go ahead with that kind of a relationship. Don't put your money in that kind of an investment. Don't, 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 don't take that route in life. Don't, don't, don't do that. But people go ahead. 
and then they encounter because what happened to them unfortunately in verse 14 was that not long after they had set sail a tempestuous head wind arose it seemed like they they were making progress suddenly they were caught in a tempestuous head wind called Eurocledon. I want to pray for you. Psalm 25. One of the things that God promises to do is to pluck our feet out of the net. If there is anything in which you have been caught, he is still a way maker. He is still a God of mercy. James 2 and verse 13. His mercy still triumphs over judgment. Psalm 40. He brought the psalmist out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, put his feet upon the rock to stay. And I believe that even if you got it wrong, the mercy of God, you know, will yet avail for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Now, the second reason why people go through storms in life is when they join themselves with somebody that God is trying to get their attention. Somebody, so God is trying to get somebody's attention. And then you now join yourself with someone like that. I want to put it like that. God is trying to get the person's attention. I can't put it milder than that. Uh, you, can, you can fill in the, the blanks. You, you can put in your own words. God is trying to get the person's attention. Like what happened to Jonah. God was trying to get Jonah's attention. Jonah was traveling at cross purposes with God's will for his life. And then some people were now in the same ship with a man that God was trying to get his attention. At times, people are just victims by proxy. Victims by proxy. Like Jehoshaphat's scripture. The third way that people, or the third reason that people go through storms is a storm can come as hell's reaction to the next thing that God wants to do in your life. Hell's reaction to the next thing. If you go to Mark chapter 4 from verse 35 to verse 40, the Bible said, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. Why did this happen? You won't understand the full import of what happened here until you go to the next chapter. Because in the next chapter, he goes to a place where a man had been under the siege of a legion of demons. It's called the demonic of Gadara. Satan was trying to stop Jesus before Jesus could stop him. And the Bible told us that he went to the place. He sets this man free. And towards the end of Mark chapter 5. The Bible said. Uh, I think by Mark chapter 5 verse 20. The Bible said that this man went about. Ten cities. And he began to proclaim. The good news. Proclaim his emancipation. Proclaim his deliverance. So the reason for the storm. Was because Satan was afraid. Or what was going to happen on the other side, you know, of um, um, the journey. <laughs> Praise God. He was afraid. He was afraid. He was afraid. At times, Satan is right. Look at what happened to Jesus when he was born. As a baby, the Bible said that all hell broke loose. All the children were being killed from the age of two and down. Why? Why? Why would such a thing happen? Just a little baby. Because of what the child represented. First John chapter 3 and verse 8. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So succinctly put, Satan is not fighting you at times because of where you are, but because of where you're going. Not where you're coming from, but where God is taking you to. Satan is afraid. Satan will always react to prophecy. He will always try to fight whatever he fears. So I believe that what is going on right now globally, um, by the grace of God, when this is over, we will be able to look and say, eh, so this is what the enemy was afraid of. This is why all of this was happening. And all hell broke loose. 
Because when this is over, there will be a prepared table for you, for your loved ones, for everyone that is connected to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to share with you five things that you do when you are going through a stormy season. Whether a health crisis, whether a marriage crisis, whether a financial windstorm. I want to share with you five things that you must pay attention to. Because it's important that you have an answer for every season of your life. That you don't, you don't, the Bible said in Isaiah 59 verse 19, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift a standard. Meaning that it's okay for the flood to come when you know what standard has to be lifted. What standard has to be raised against the flood that is coming. We're going to listen to the worship team again. Then I'm going to come back and share these five things very quickly with you. You don't want to miss this. It will be a blessing now and always for you. Amen. God bless you.
thank you guys for being a blessing. Thank you for being a blessing with that song. Thank you. We minister to strengthen and encourage. So I want to share these five things with you very quickly. Bullet points. Pay attention to them. Number one, when you're facing a storm in life, the first thing is you must stay anchored. You see, a ship does not sink because it's inside water. A ship only begins to sink when the water begins to enter into it. In, 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 in unstable times, you must remain firmly founded on your convictions. Psalm 125 from verse 1. It said, they that trust in the Lord will be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken, but stands firm forever. Psalm 46 and verse 1. He said, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. When Job heard all the bad news, in Job 1 and verse 22, the Bible said that Job, in all of this, Job did not sin, neither did he charge God with any wrong. When you are going through a challenging season of your life, it is time more than ever before to remain well grounded, grounded grounded and say things like isaiah 50 and verse 7 the lord god will help me therefore shall i not be confounded therefore have i set my face like a flint and i know that i will not be ashamed glory be to jesus it's just a season i can't overemphasize that you must make sure you stay grounded the second thing when you're going through a challenging season in your life is you must know your go-to. You must know your go-to. You must know your go-to. Don't dial the wrong number. Don't talk to the wrong people. Don't go in the wrong direction. When people are going through challenging times, at times they are looking for help um, from, from their friends. And, and of course, there's a place where you can get succor from friends. If you look at 1 Samuel 23 and verse 16, one of my favorite scriptures. The Bible said that Jonathan came and strengthened or encouraged David in the Lord is God. You know, David was in, in, a, in not a very good place. But Jonathan was there to strengthen him and to encourage him. But you know there are other times when there is nobody who is there to encourage you. Like 1 Samuel 30 and verse 6. And you will have to encourage yourself in the Lord. Because there are times when the people you are trying to get help from, they themselves are jaded. They themselves, they won't help. It's like that woman in the days of famine in Israel who went to cry to the king. And the king said, if God does not help you, where are you going to get help from? Where are you going to get help from? In Psalm 121, verse 1, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes not from any man, from God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. You, you don't go in the wrong direction. Act Psalm 16, and verse 4, it said that their sorrows will be multiplied. Who is sin? after another god now you're going through sorrow but you are not seeing sorrow until you begin to now subscribe to the wrong prescription to the wrong counsel to the wrong sources go again because you can't cast down Beelzebub with Beelzebub. no no that's why the bible said uh, in nahum nahum chapter one nahum chapter one and verse seven he said the lord um <laughs> praise god yeah, uh, 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 the Lord is good, a strong God in the day of trouble, and He knows those who put their trust in Him. The Lord is a strong old. Proverbs 18 and verse 10, I believe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. That's your go to. Psalm 50 and verse 15. He said, Perform your vows to the Lord, call upon Him in the day of trouble. In the day of trouble, call upon Him. He will answer you and you will glorify him. He will deliver you and you will glorify him. So you must know your go-to. You must know at times your friends may not be the best of may not be in the best of places to be able to help you. The friends of Job couldn't help him. Not even his wife could help him when he was going through his challenging season. But thank God that we can always go to him. There is a river. The streams we are rough make glad the city of God. The certain place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in our midst. We will not be moved. God will help her. And that right on time. The very third thing when you are facing a stormy season in your life is you must be able to hear God in the midst of your storm. 
Look at Job 38. The Bible said, God answered Job from the eye of a violent storm. Man, you see, what if God was speaking and Job was not hearing? What if God was trying to get Job's attention? He's talking to him. But Job can't Job can hear. Job has allowed the eye things to exalt themselves above God's knowledge in his life. He can't hear God anymore. All you can see, the bills are piling. All you can see, all the negative reports from the hospital. All you can see is all the rags. All the rags. All, that's all you can see. And he can hear God. He's, 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 he's like, no, 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 no. No, there is no way you can, you can say you are faithful and I'm going through all of this. No, in the midst of your storm, you must be able to hear his voice. Because if you look at Job chapter 38, after God spoke, the moment God spoke, the next thing was the beginning of the restoration of Job. Meaning that the earlier you started hearing God, the faster you are going to end that season end that siege, calm that storm. The faster, the earlier you started hearing the voice of God, the faster they're going to calm the voice of God. God is still in the business of talking, even in the midst or whatever it is you and I may be going through. The fourth thing that you need to do is don't allow offense. Don't enter into a season of bitterness because Satan will always try to question the character of God in our lives. When we're going through a challenging season see uh what happened to lazarus they said that he was somebody loved by jesus john chapter 11 and then they now told him that your friend that's what whom you love is sick and in verse 4 jesus said this sickness is not unto death but that god may be glorified but after that lazarus died and then jesus comes into bethany and they said if you had been here meaning that you're coming late let me say this to you. God is never late. God is never late. It only depends on what God is trying to accomplish. If what he wanted to do was to be the healer, then it would have been late if he came after he died. But what he wanted to be was to be the resurrection, to be the resurrection and the life, to be the one who will raise the dead. Romans chapter 4 verse 17, he quickens the dead, calling the things that be not as though they were, and they become. So there are times we are saying, God, don't let this happen. Don't allow this to happen. And God says, I have a bigger plan. At times when God comes late, he comes big. He comes big. Don't allow any grudge in your heart. Look at what happened to Job. The moment Job, because you see, when you're going through a challenging time, everybody suddenly will become um, qualified. They will think they are qualified to diagnose what you are going through. And say, they know what you're going through, what you're going through. Like, maybe because you miss God, you don't pray well enough. You, you, what, what, what should that have happened to you as a child of God? You know, the Bible calls them physicians of no value, for, forgers of lies, worthless physicians. Everybody suddenly assumes that they, they can be your counselor, they can tell you what you should do, how you should live life. And you see, that can be very hot, especially when it is coming from close quarters from those who should know better. Because somebody's opinion cannot really hurt you if they're not close enough to you. They can hurt you. But when, 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 but when that happens, you must guard your heart and do what Job did. The Bible said when Job prayed for his friends, Job 42 and verse 10, the Bible said God turned his captivity around. That is, you don't allow grudge in your heart. What to do is to begin to believe the best of people, release people. Don't, don't allow grudge against God. Don't let anything make you doubt God's faithfulness. Romans 8 and 35. Don't, don't, don't let anything separate you from the love of Christ that is in Christ Jesus. For me to live is Christ. For me to live is Christ. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Hallelujah. And then finally, you must enter into your priesthood. When you are facing a stormy season, you must enter. It is time for you. It is, that thing is calling for the priest in you to respond. It's calling for the priest. To, it's, it's an invitation to the priest to you to step up to that situation and do what you should do as a priest of the Most High God. In Mark chapter 4, the Bible told us in verse 37 that Jesus Christ, when he said to him, Do you not care that we perish? The Bible said that, you know, the wisdom, I said the wisdom arose, the waste beat into the boat, it was already filling, and then they said, Do you not care that we're perishing? You know, and then the Bible said, 
uh, in the next verse, verse 39, that Jesus Christ arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, that is stepping into your priesthood, stepping into your priesthood. That was what Jesus did. And you and I are supposed to do the same thing when we're facing any stormy season. You assume your priesthood. That is, you're not just a priest. You are a priest with the capacity to make decrees. To make decrees. To say, the, to say no, whatever I permit or not is what is permitted in heaven. And look at what Jesus did. Jesus did not even speak to the storm. Jesus spoke to the source. He spoke to the wind. He spoke to the sea. That's the source. At times, most of the time, we are dealing with the fruits. And we're not designing the roots. And it's the enemy that you can design, that you can defeat. Satan's greatest ploy and strategy is to play anonymous. That's why the Bible says, if the thief is found, he'll be made to restore sevenfold and to give all the substance of his house. Matthew 13, verse 25, while man slept, the enemy came and sold tears. And in verse 28, when the good man woke, woke up, he said, an enemy has done this. You need to be able to identify the source of anything you're dealing with. Second King to 6, when the axe head fell, Elisha said, where did he fall? He didn't be able to know, is, is this because I'm in a wrong relationship or wrong alliance with somebody? Is it because I didn't pay attention to God's warnings at some time in my life? Or is it that the devil is just rearing up his ugly head? What I need to do is to step up to this situation and say, so far you have gone and you will go no further. Of course, for us right now, as believers, what we must do right now is to do what believers ought to do. Second Chronicles 7 and verse 14. The Bible says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, it says, and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way. He said, I am going to hear from heaven, forgive their sins, I'm going to heal their land. That is why in this season, as a church, we're, we're, we're all now on a prayer drive, a prayer mobilization. Four days of the week, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, between 6 and 7 p.m. local time here in Nigeria. You know, one hour, you can join us from anywhere in the world for one hour of effectual prayer. When you pray, you keep the enemy at bay. When you pray, you keep the enemy at bay. I want to pray for you in a minute. I want to pray for you. Pray for you for strength. Pray for you for grace. Pray for you for discernment. Pray for you that you'll be fortified in your inner man by God's spirit. Pray for you that your head will be above the waters. Pray for you that you will continue to walk upon your high places. That you're not going to be submerged in this. That you are going to, you are going to come out better and stronger. Look, the Bible told us, see, glory be to God. The Bible told us in the days of, in the days of Moses, when they faced the Red Sea, Moses stretched forth the, the rod and the sea parted. In the days of Joshua, when they put their legs out, the Bible said that the people walked on dry ground. But I love what Jesus, my Lord, did in Matthew chapter 14. He was walking on the waters. What was troubling them? He was walking on it. That's the realm that you and I have been called into. Remember, we are seated together with him in heavenly places. That's where you're seated right now. So you are, you are riding upon this. You are, you are softening this. You are riding this. You are softening this. You are riding this. See what happened to Noah at the end of the flood. In Genesis chapter 8 and verse 4. The Bible said when the flood was over, the ark rested on the mountain top. Not in the valley. On the mountain top. And when this is all over, you'll be elevated. You'll be in a better place. In the name of Jesus. A better place financially. A better place in every respect. Spiritually in a better place, definitely. In the name of Jesus. It's time to dig in your ears into God's word. And deepen your work with him more than ever before. More than ever before. It is this work that you will have as your edge to win this war. It is this work. This work with God. That will be your leverage to win this war. When, Noah, when Enoch walked with God, he was translated. He was beyond the reach of what happened to other people when you walk with God. As you and I deepen our walk with God in this season, we're going to be beyond the reach of whatever it is that is going on globally in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I'm going to come back to pray with you in a minute. God bless you. So as part of our worship this morning, we want to give our offerings. We want to pay our tithe. We know that you have uh, been blessed by the word. And so as part of our worship, it's important for us that we also give to God. So if you're ready to do that, the details are written on the screen for you. And then you can do your transfer from wherever you are. If you're doing that, can we just pray together? Father, we thank you for the privilege you have given to us this morning to give to you. We know you are the matchless giver. We thank you because we know on account of this giving this morning, you will bless every life, bless every heart, cause new platforms to be created. Let new doors be opened. Let men give to every one of us and in good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Thank you because in this season, we are being remembered for good. Thank you because we know, O oh God Almighty, that in this season, O oh Heavenly Father, great things abound for us. We give honor and we give praise to your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. I do hope you were blessed by that word that I shared with you this morning. Uh, in case you're watching this and you don't even know Jesus Christ as a Lord and personal Savior, this is the best time to have and to develop a meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ, wherever you may be watching from. Wherever you may be watching from. You can call upon him in the midst of any situation and he's called a very present help. He will show up for you. Do you know that what is going on right now is nothing in comparison to what is going to happen imminently when time wraps up and the world is finally over? If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, why don't you join me to pray this prayer? It's so simple. You pray it, God will honor it, and then Christ will come live in your heart. If you want to know peace, then accept the one who is called the Prince of Peace. Say with me, dear Lord Jesus, today I believe with all my heart that you came into this world to die on my behalf. I believe that you died, shed your blood for me. And after three days, God raised you up for my forgiveness. Today you are seated on the Father's right hand. And today, as I confess you as my Lord and accept you as my Savior, thank you for saving me. Thank you for coming to live in me. Thank you for forgiving me all my sins. Thank you for making me your very own. Today I'm a child of God. My sins are forgiven. My past is redeemed. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I will never be the same again. Amen. Heavenly Father, I want to pray with every single person watching me today from wherever they may be on the face of the earth. I'm asking, oh God, that comfort indeed will come to them from your word. I pray right now, if there is anybody going through any other kind of a storm, apart from what is going on globally, I command an end to that storm. The Bible said you make wars to cease to the ends of the earth. And concluding this global issue going on right now, we declare according to Psalm 9 verse 6, that destructions must come to a perpetual end. We step into our priesthood knowing that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven. We declare right now that an end has come to this issue, to this virus. We command the tenure right now to expire. We declare your tenancy on earth is over. In the name of Jesus, go back to wherever you came from. And we declare according to 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 16, the peace of God by all means. The peace of God by all means. The peace of God by all means in the nations of the world. We pray for all the earth workers. Father, your protection will remain sure over them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the ministry of your angels in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, because an end has come to this scorch. An end has come. This curve is flattened in the name of Jesus. We thank you because even now we have the complete victory. And we declare, Lord, whatever might have been lost to this, we declare a season of restoration. And everybody, God, will be moved to a better place by you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let this week be a blessed one. 
let this week be a blessed one let this week be a blessed one in the name of jesus we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise let grace abound to each one oh god every single one of us let grace abound to be able to stay upon our watch stay in the, stay in, in the place of prayers and then begin to assume our office as royal priests we thank you we declare, oh God, that we'll begin to record testimonies left, right, and center. We thank you because you always cause us to triumph in every place by Christ Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I do hope that this was a blessing. Please pay attention to these things that I just shared with you today. Share this with other people. Pay attention to those five points. I call them my five loaves this morning. And as we pay attention to them, it will be a blessing to you and everybody within your circle of influence. I look forward to seeing you during the week. We're going to be talking about how to navigate seasons, handling seasons in the course of the week. And it's going to be um, like we did last week Wednesday as well. Um, I look forward to seeing you. Or I hope you are looking forward to it also on Wednesday. Have a super blessed week. Good morning once again. <music>